This week in post, it's an unscripted, unpracticed live edit. Hi, I'm Scott Davenport. Welcome to In Post. Time for another live edit. Haven't done one of these in a few weeks, so it's a good opportunity to let you see all of the bumps, bruises, cuts, and scrapes that normally go into one of my post processing endeavors. So let's just start right away. We're going to dive right in. A uh, photo from Scripps Pier. I was doing some long exposures up above the, the pier and uh, picked one. I'm going to start on it. I have not done any processing on this at all. So let's just dive right into Lightroom. All right, here's the photo we're going to work with today. And uh, overall, you know, pretty simple composition. Uh, I just like everything being smooth and basic. Uh, as I look at the photo, there's a few spots that I see that need a little bit of work. Obviously, the horizon's a little bit crooked. There's a little bit of a distraction right toward the very left edge. And um, other than that, I, I think it's, uh, it's pretty good. So let's go ahead and start with lens corrections. Corrections are already on. Great. R key to bring up crop. And we're gonna do the little angle trick here. And this is something, you know, I wish that Lightroom would let me zoom in so I could more precisely position that, but that's gonna take care of that. It actually looks like fixing the horizon took care of that little distraction on the side there. So one less thing to do. Uh, let's check out spots. I know my sensor is incredibly dirty. I keep saying I should clean it. Q and A to turn on that. And sure enough, yeah, there is a bunch of stuff up in here. So let's start taking care of these. Uh, I am way overdue for a visit to my local camera store to have my sensor cleaned. I guess while I'm cleaning spots, some people ask me, do I clean my own sensor? You know, I used to do that on my Nikon. Um, I don't do it on my Sony. And at this point, I, uh, I just decided I'm going to, you know, every six months or so or when it gets really dirty, just pay somebody to do it for me because uh, they end up doing a better job than I do. And it's worth it for me to have it professionally cleaned. Um, that looks pretty good. Let me toggle this on and off here. I'm just pressing the A key back and forth just to make sure I haven't missed anything that looks like an obvious spot. Like some of these areas in the ocean, it's harder to tell in that um, visualized view. All right, so that's looking okay. All right, so I think we've got the very basics done. Let's go into the, well, not the basics, <laughs> the upfront work done. Let's go into the basic panel and start doing uh, some of our normal work here. So white balance, we've got white. We want some white in the clouds here. Let's start with that. That looks more like how I remember, you know, very, you know, this is mid afternoon. So this is a you know, pretty blue type day. So there's a lot of blue uh, in the you know, general cast to the photo. So I'm pretty happy with that right from the, the get-go. Um, now the sun was over to the right, so I expect the right-hand side to be brighter. And some of it's gonna be blown out if I actually hit the, the J key. Yeah, I've got a few blowouts there. Let's see what we can rein those in. Um, I'm gonna start with contrast, adding a little more of that. And I'm not doing the black and white mode on this one today, because there's not too much that I need to have added in. It's really to make sure the pier struts and so forth get dark white point. White point's probably already there. So it's already there. I'm going to actually rein that back a little bit to try to pull that sum in. Now there's going to be blow out there. There's, you know, there's no way I'm going to get around that. The sun is going to you know, blow out certain areas there. But um, I think we'll be able to recover a little more of that when we get the highlights. Let's bring up the blacks though. So I want to get some of those richer blacks. Oh, I have to push this really far. I have, I'm going the wrong way here, guys. That's what's going on. Let me pull that back there. Okay, there we are. Not too much had to do there. All right, highlights. Let's bring that back in. We can start to see those details in the clouds on the right-hand side. Those are starting to come back in. That looks good. Open up the shadows, maybe just a tiny bit, not a lot. Um, and I'm kind of just rolling my finger over the, the trackpad here to, to kind of just test a bit with the, with the, the shadows there. Now it looks like I've got some type of artifact or something, a, a glare or a lens flare or something there. Um, it's not bothering me incredibly, but it also means that this photo is not going to end up in the portfolio. It'd be fine for a, for a share if the rest of this comes out okay. All right, clarity. Let's pop that up a little bit. And certainly some more vibrance. I want more color there for sure. There's greens and the little patch of the cliff face is coming out better. That looks nice. A little bit of saturation, maybe. I want to see if I can get some of the aquas 
in the in the water to come up more because those were pretty darn nice. So clicking and dragging up. Now I have to be careful not to go too crazy because the sky will also get affected by this. And so I'm just rotating or rotating, sliding up and down after I've picked a color point to see where that leads me. Not bad. I'm starting to feel like this whole side is um, just kind of empty. I'm actually gonna go back and revisit the crop. What happens if I drag this in some? Um, I like that better because it's showing the pier more. I picked a bad spot for the for the crop itself though, just because there's too much blue right up in that corner. Now I have to play the game a little bit of not losing some of the motion blur, but also maintaining focus on the pier. Um, hmm. Let's see. One more time. Let's reset. Undo. I'm going to keep it wide for now. Actually, you know what I think I'll try? Let's try a 16 by 9 crop. I'll go widescreen on this. And that might start to look a little better. I like that foam. I want to keep some of that. So maybe I'm just trimming off some of that dead space and making it look a little more like a, a pano, really. Um, I'm still not feeling it. Still not, it's still not working for me. Go back to the original, because uh, I feel like that when I when I crop in the 16 by 9, I'm ending up with uh, you know almost a dead center horizon, and there's not an extreme amount of symmetry or anything like that to this this photo. So um, that that part is just not working for me. Um, I'm gonna just leave it. I'm gonna leave it as is and keep keep going from here. I think the next thing I'm gonna do is try to take care of this right side. There's still there's still a fair amount of blowout here. Let's grab that gradated filter, graduated filter rather. Stretch something out over here, maybe about there, and let's start playing with exposure and just start to nudge that down. Not too much. 20, maybe increase that feather some so that we're not taking it down too far. And a slight touch on saturation. I'm mainly watching the upper right corner of the sky there to get a little more of that blue to come back in. I mean, it's blown out because that's where the sun was, but that's okay. Um, all right, let's say done there. Let's say check progress, backslash key. Before, after, that's looking pretty good. Um, hmm, what else to do with this? Maybe a slight amount of raising some of the exposure on the pier to kind of highlight that a little bit more. Not sure about that. That might actually be better served by the uh, shadows slider. I'm going to go to the shadows again. I'm kind of watching the pier right now. So if I bring that up, the pier is going to get brightened. That's okay. Now, of course, the, the foreground cliff is getting brightened a lot. I'm going to take care of that with a vignette. Let's try this uh, color priority. I talked about that a while ago. Um, okay, around this. Let's get the feather down to zero so I can see what's going on here. Midpoint. Okay, I already know I'm going to abandon the um, the, the the vignette in Lightroom. I'm going to want to reposition the center of that. I want that to be a little more focusing on the pier. It's going to be better in on one, and that might be the only thing I do in on one. But I'm going to bring this over in there now. Let's go to photo edit in. I'm going to go straight into effects because I don't have any type of masking work to do. Okay, in effect, uh, since I'm here, of course, I'm going to go play a little bit with dynamic contrast. Let's see what we got going on with that. Um, like it on the foreground, don't like it in the clouds. Masking bug, drop the bug on the horizon, feather that out some. And let's take a peek at that before and after. I like that a little bit more. Um, I might even change the angle of this and start to take it away from some of that ocean area as well. The pier is not so much important. This is nice. It's picking up that foreground element. So I like that. I'm getting a little more of that texture in the swirls of water. That's cool. And let's go ahead and also check out color. Since uh, I started in color in Lightroom, I may as well take a little closer look 
at some of the blues in the aquas. What do we have in the presets? Dark and sky, no touches blues. Sky enhancer does something similar. That's a little bit too much. Um, let me see about sky enhancer, but then taking back the hue shift. And let's check out blues. That's probably a saturation slider, sure is. You see before and after on that, that really does much. I like what it's doing for the for the ocean. I'm getting a little more of that greens, those aquas there. That's cool. So I think I'm going to keep it. Uh, but really what I came here to do, the vignette. Grab the vignette. Let's get the feather to zero. Bring the size down. Position the vignette over the pier. Let's bring our size down even more. I'm going to do this clicking and dragging a little bit more. So I want to bring my eye down here, kind of this area. All right, feather that all the way out. And now start to play with with brightness and the size. Let's take a look at that before and after. Before and after. Hmm, one more time looking at that feather. I wonder if I can further kind of um, reduce that, that bit of flaring that I'm seeing there with a judicious positioning of that vignette. So I'm trying to get that, that transition point right around that area where the flare is. See if that does anything extra for us. Not really. Even bringing the brightness and darkness down. Yeah, not so much. Um, this is here's an experiment. Now, more or less, I'm kind of I think I'm done with the photo, but this is going to be more of an experiment than anything else. We turn off the vignette. We go back to the color enhancer, um, and just add another one. Add a color enhancer, and I'm going to see about getting a. I'm going to watch this area of the screen. Let's zoom in right over here. Whoops, let me click on that, drag it over. Whoop, too far. <laughs> Come on. There we go. So now I can see where I have this little band of brightness here. Let's see if we can target that. That looks kind of yellowish. If I start to reduce saturation, do I notice anything in that area? Now, I know the cliff is going crazy, but my eyes are in the center right now. Not too much there. What about... Not seeing much there either. Oh, I didn't play around with brightness in there. Let me reset this and go back into that yellows again. Saturation down. What about brightness? I'm seeing a very, very subtle effect. I'm not even sure if it's coming through on your video there. But what I'm going to do now is grab a brush, kind of brush through this area here, and then invert the mask. And see if that does anything at all. No, I don't think that's helping. Go ahead and get rid of it. So the idea there was to kind of find that color tone and play it down just a little bit in that area. I've done that in the past with some other lens flares. It's not working too well here, so I'm just not going to worry about it. But that's the end of it. So um, let's turn on the vignette again. So that was before and that was after, just with a little bit of uh, extra contrast work in effects. Yeah, all in all, not bad. Um, there's another shot that I took at this place. It was a panoramic. Uh, I think that one I might spend a little more time on to see about getting something that um, has you know, just a wider aspect ratio. The thing I did notice, too, looking at the photo here, was uh, that the, the, the small little plants on the cliff in the foreground, those are a little bit soft. Not to be expected, but I'm doing 30 seconds and there's a lot of wind. Even those things are going to move around a little bit. So, um, you know, I guess maybe a, a takeaway is in the field, I should have taken an extra shot where I had a quick shutter speed, capture those and freeze those in action. I think my brain was more in the uh, long exposure world. I forgot about that. So tip of the week, I would say it's uh, the vignette centering that is available in On One Effects. I uh, really like that, and that was really what prompted me to jump into On One and ended up you know, playing around a little bit more with some dynamic contrast and adding a little bit more crispness and color to the photo overall. 
with that center, you know, little option on the, the crosshairs and the vignette and on one, that's, um, that's, that's a, that's a thing of beauty. And that does it for this weekend post. Hope you've enjoyed it. Hope you liked the, the live edits. If you're enjoying these, let me know, subscribe to the channel, shoot me a comment, send me your questions, any questions you get. Uh, I would love to answer them for you. And until next time, my name's Scott Davenport. Happy shooting.